Hello, everybody. Good evening and welcome to this um, other webinar uh, about the series Let's Discover the Volumetric Cut Trading Platform. Uh, last week, I said it was the last um, the last webinar, but actually, I was wrong. So <laughs> apparently, I'm still here. Uh, it was my mistake because I uh i had mistaken the calendar of the of the webinars uh so apparently there, there was uh a topic we had left behind which is um the aggregate volume and large trades uh which will be the topic we will be talking about tonight uh so please take a look at the disclaimer and so we will be getting started in a bit and then of course uh if some of you wants to have a quick recap of the uh, things we said about uh, order flow last time. Of course, we can have a look at the market together and uh, uh, trying to uh, include the, the topics we're going to talk about tonight with all we said about the uh, volume analysis in the previous webinars. Uh, so before we get started, let me just remind you uh, the offer uh, being still available uh, in partnership with Volumetrica and uh, Tickmill. So for those already Tickmill customers, you can get a license for the Volsys platform uh, for a discounted price. Uh, of course, terms and conditions apply. Uh, if some of you are not customers of Tickmill customers already, uh, you can email the Volumetrica trading team and uh, request a free demo with full functionalities over a limited period of time. Uh, you can do that by clicking the contact form here on the Volumetrica uh, website and if you want to uh, ask me some questions those this is my email address you can mail me and ask me whatever you want about the topics we have we discussed in the webinars so let's get started and uh, uh, let's get the platform i hope all of you can see my uh, shared screen and let's take a look at the first of all let's take let's talk about the what big trades and aggregate volume is uh, so we will also uh, have a look how to uh, include the indicator showing that evidence in the platform for those of you already using Volsys platform uh, first of all uh, what is aggregate or what is aggregate volume what what do we mean when we talk about large big trades and aggregate volume uh let's say to just to introduce the concept in a very easy way uh it is a order uh being splitted a large order splitted into many small orders of course the aggregation is the main part allowing us to uh reconstruct what happens in the time and sales so basically uh surely you remember what we said about uh market microstructure so when aggressive volume gets into the market uh there is also always a track left by those trades in the time and sales which is this tool here oh sorry let me just yeah like this uh i already showed you this tool during the uh we ded dedicated webinar when we were talking about market microstructure uh basically all of those uh green and red squares you can see quite quickly <laughs> moving in, in the time and sales uh those are aggressive trades and uh when we have a green square this is a mar a market order lifting the offer in an aggressive way so basically aggressive buying when we have a red square that shows a 
aggressive selling order. All right. So uh, along with that, we can also see some many other information, so like for example, the time where the trade has happened, its volume in terms of volume uh, lifting the offer or hitting the bid, and of course the price which has been hit in terms of bid or ask side of the book. Okay, so this is what normally happens uh, whilst market trades, right? Uh, that that means that normally we are we aren't really able by just reading the time and sales we aren't really able to uh, detect when a large volume is entering the trade because there are two chances actually either the volume hits the bid with a very large order uh, which is uh, hitting the ask or the bid with its entire size so we might have something like here in the uh in the order in the time and sales something like this time nine seven minutes past 19 volume maybe 230 at the price three nine fifty six point seventy five okay we can either have a situation like this but let me be honest this is something that quite never happens it never happens because uh normally uh when there is a, a, a large intention by large traders to uh place of course large orders into the market uh they rarely happen all of the same level and all on the same order okay under the same trade so what normally happens is that those large orders they just get split into mm, small or smaller orders okay which sometimes don't even happen at the same price level so they tend to happen around similar price area so it is more likely we, we are more likely to have a situation like this to have a print so a row uh, appearing here in the time and sales 19 and 7 minutes 10 lots at this price 19 uh, 7 minutes past 19 other 30 lots at 39 56.0 and so on so unless those trades happen very very quickly it is quite hard for us retail traders uh to understand when a large trading is a large trade is hitting the market or which that would actually mean that the large a, a large trader is initiating in a certain specific direction okay and this is where aggregate volume comes uh to help because uh some of the most advanced tool in terms of order flow analysis are able to uh reconstruct the time in sales so basically uh we in that, that case we have a reconstructed tape which is able to recognize uh when small orders comes into the market in the same direction but if they are occurring at similar price level so with a uh, an offset in with a specific offset in ticks uh and with a distance of a few milliseconds from the first one to the last one then it is this algorithm is able to reconstruct the tape and uh recognize what a large a large order has been trading over that levels okay so uh this is what basically uh, aggregate volume is uh this is something which of course it is very very useful in terms of reading the order flow uh why uh because it acts as a confirmation 
of a commitment of large traders in a specific direction, so buy or sell, in a specific price level, which, for example, it might have been uh, object of our previous uh, volume profile analysis or VWAP analysis or just the minimum, the, the, the lowest of the day, the high of the day and so on. So basically, if we have a level which for many other reasons we were considering as a important inflection point where we would have to uh, attention what happens when price reaches that level. Uh, if we have the evidence of aggre aggregate volume coming in, that might be a huge confirmation of what our bias was. Uh, and therefore, we can use this information to help us in, a, in making a trading decision. Uh, this, this faction, this possibility comes actually with different, with different uh, yeah, sorry, with different chance. I mean, we can have that evidence shown in different, uh, in different situations. For example, uh, Volsys platform offers an indicator called big trades with this one. So you can reach the indicator by right clicking on the, on the chart. And if it's not already attached in the chart we are using, we can easily just scroll down the indicator list and choose it from the selected from the main list with a double click that will be immediately attached to our main uh, to the list of the indicator used in this uh, in this chart. And of course, as uh, it is a, once it's attached to the chart, all we have to do is, of course, uh, set it up. Uh, what's the best way to, to set it uh, according to the instrument we are using it in with? First of all, we need to think in terms of thresholds. Uh, of course, if we are using if you want to have this information on the S&P 500, uh, we need to know what a specific relevant volume would be for that instrument. For instance, I, I am using it set to with a filter of 500 volume, a volume of 500. Why? Because of course, I know that S&P 500 will need at least 500 aggregate volume for it to be significant in terms of analysis. If we want to use the same information, for example, on the NASDAQ, which is a much lighter uh, instrument in terms of market liquidity, so in terms of volume traded, we will have to set it lower at a lower threshold. So something like, for example, how normally I use it at 100. Okay, so I would set my threshold for the NASDAQ at 100 volume. Then, of course, the most important part of this indicator is that it needs to be specified here that the, uh, the volume that we want to have shown it is an aggregate, a volume achieved by aggregate trades. And after we have set up the indicator with these settings, of course, the indicator will uh, calculate the amount of trades hitting the time in sales, and it will reconstruct the tape in terms of the settings we have indicated here. So once it happens, when it when the algorithm starts detecting more than 500 volume entering the market, either buy or sell side, if those volume are uh, 
respecting the criteria of aggregate trades, so that means that they are entering the market at close price levels and within a specific uh, execution time expressed in milliseconds between one trade and the, and the next trade, then we have the aggregation parameter net. So in that case, the indicator will uh, put a small square, a small square on the on the chart, with the indicated the volume of the aggregate trades detected in that area. Let's look back if we can see an example an example of this. All right. So, uh, of course, this is something that. It doesn't happen all the time, so we will have to scroll back the chart a little bit until we find a specific situation where that has happened. Uh, let me just let just be <laughs> a little bit patient, and so we can also add a uh, a quick explanation of how we can use this information in order to uh fit our trading criteria here it is as you can see the price at this very top has shown an aggregate volume of 583 volume hitting the ask side of the book why do i say so because we can see the uh, small square, a small rectangle actually at the top of this bar, it comes with a uh, with a light blue color. So that means, of course, this is something you can change in the, in the indicator settings. This is the color indicated for the ask side. So that means that over here, over the last few ticks, an aggregate volume hitting the buying side of the book, the ask side of the book, of 583 contracts has hit the market. Uh, so we can definitely tell that somebody has been trading a, <laughs> a quite a large, a large buying position right at this level. Uh, of course, when we have the opposite situation, so we have a, a large aggregate volume hitting the, uh, the sell side of the book, so basically the, the bid side of the book, that rectangle will be colored in pink. Okay, and same thing inside the rectangle will be uh, plotted the number of the contract detecting to be an aggregate volume okay so it's like this indicator kind of reconstructs the tape and uh joins all of these ball orders hitting it very quickly that side of the book and make makes a sum of them all so we can have an idea of what the aggregate volume over that specific area is so how do we use the and this evidence of large order as an aggregate volume for our trading. Let's say, first of all, we have, we always need to remember that this is, of course, a trade that has been initiated in a specific direction. So basically, this is always to be considered as a strong buying pressure. Okay, so uh, this is an objective, this is an objective reading of this information. This is a, a heavy buying activity over these levels. But then, how come did the market, didn't the market, did, oh sorry, didn't the market follow through this volume and continued moving upwards? Because sometimes this uh, aggregate volume is not always uh, left by big, big or big, big boys, big large traders. 
sometimes it is left by HFTs, so basically uh, high frequency trading algorithms, uh, which don't necessarily are initiated initiating a position. They are just making some very quick and very short scalping trades among specific price levels. So first thing we need to uh, pay attention to is always price action. That means, yeah, this is an evidence of heavy buying activity, but what did, what kind of effect did this heavy trade, trade buying activity left in the market? Was it absorbed? As we said the last time, what absorption is, or did did it make it actually to initiate price to move in a specific direction, and was actually price uh, moving in that direction supported by that heavy volume? This is the this is the answer this is the question we always need to ask ourselves bef before taking deciding to take a trade based on aggregate volume let's say the most powerful the most powerful uh indication by this evidence it occurs when this volume gets absorbed so uh, when we have a follow through, most of the time it is uh, incredibly quick uh, in order to for us to have a benefit to uh, go in continuation of that move. So most of the time we are just not able to follow through that move uh, unless unless uh, a specific situation which I will go through in a while in a bit. But let's say normally it gets more powerful when we have evidence of absorption of this aggregate volume, like this example right here. You can see that price was pushing higher. As you can see, we have lots of bars showing just to uh, have a reading of the order flow considering what we said last time as well uh, we have basically a directional delta as you can see price is mostly mostly a trading buying volume so we always have directional delta suddenly we have this evidence of a big trade which actually leads to an immediate absorption, also acts as an excess of this already, already here, already uh, evident initiative, it acts as an excess, and then we can see that market already in the in the next in the very next bar is showing a huge a huge exhaustion of that heavy buying activity that was taking place at the very top of this swing high of course in an aggressive way that could have already have been an indication for a quick scalp reversal trade when we did have evidence of that once we can see that the aggregate volume area so basically the area into, intended as a few ticks so something like five or six ticks area where the uh, aggregate trade has happened we wait for it to be retested also in the very next bar and if in the on its pullback we can spot exhaustion so volume 
experiencing a drop, then in that case, we can have an, still an aggressive, but a good one, confirmation that that volume was absorbed, so wasn't able to move the market straight away in that direction. So why, why is that interesting? Because first of all, we can have a very evident, a very clear idea of, the, uh, of that volume being unable to move the market immediately. Okay, so there is most of the time uh, some space for a quick retracement of the price. Okay, this is of course because we don't know actually if uh, that trade is to be considered as a uh, the last leg of a HFT activity or if big boys are really initiating right here. We have a confirmation of that where only when price, we, we basically we just need to wait a little bit what happens when the price does when it comes back to the area of the aggregate volume okay if we don't see volume coming in in this area this volume is more likely to be intended as the final the final activity uh, of an hft otherwise if those those levels, those price levels are showing through the aggregate volume, the activity of a big boy, a big trader, we would never see exhaustion here. We would never see exhaustion here. And in that case, of course, it is a little bit more complicated because we need some further evidences in terms of, but definitely that would, that would completely change the way we want to trade this evidence because if we can detect that this volume this aggregate volume has been left by uh, big traders large traders willing to uh, initiate buying at this at this at those prices then of course we want we don't want to trade it as a fading of that move on the on the opposite we want to go with the big boys, right? But this is not the case. Why? We, because we can see that once price uh, has the chance to trade again, once again over those areas, those price areas, it gets completely exhausted. And actually what does afterwards starts initiating the other way. Why do we have this evidence? We have this evidence when we can see delta increasing over the next bar and also in the second next bar we can see uh, strong selling imbalance coming in. So as we said two webinars ago, this is an evidence of power, power in the short direction. After we had a wall this time not given by the absorption but given by a different kind of absorption <laughs> which is actually the uh an efficiency of uh whoever has left this aggregate volume to push the market higher of course this is something that uh it needs to be uh in order to be uh, powerful information it, it needs to be put in the right context uh, I have made a, an easy example an example which can easily uh, be spotted while market trades uh, and you can uh, detect actually if you have uh, this indicator set properly uh, you can make an analysis and see how uh, it price our price reacts once it shows the evidence. Of course, this is a very basic explanation, uh, which I can make in you know, half an hour. But uh, normally, 
it is a, a huge it is a huge confirmation of what an important price level has been either either if this is this shows big uh, big traders activity then if it shows uh hft fi final lag okay but let's say just to keep just to keep things easy most of the time those evidence are more uh powerful if we treat it as a point of excess of the market so if we treat it the other way they have hit the market compared to the one to the way the aggregate volume has hit the market so in this case of course it was hitting the uh, buying side of the of the ladder of the order book and i want to trade it short of course after the confirmation that we can see exhaustion here uh, why exhaustion and not absorption because normally these uh, big trades tend to occur in low volume areas so when we are trading in low volume areas we don't normally have i mean absorption is less likely to happen because in that area not that much liquidity is provided that means not so many limit orders are available to uh, to execute aggressive orders that means market won't have the chance to uh, trade that much volume so we tend to have either exhaustion like in this example or otherwise we will have a follow through of pressure to the upside so in the same direction of the big trade and the market will just follow through straight away and go in the same direction of the uh, of the big trade so it is really impossible to get the situation wrong all right so uh let's have a check if we have another example maybe to the downside let's say those trades of course are more likely to happen uh in the first minutes of the us uh, opening session or of, in the last minutes of the uh, us session so let's say uh 10 minutes uh, 10 15 minutes before uh the closing of the market uh but this is just a rule of thumb I mean, uh, sometimes they will just occur during normal uh, trading hours. Uh, but when they normally happen, uh, they will just move the market very, very quickly. And it's reaction or on that level when we can spot those uh, situations are very, uh, very clear then. Uh, so as you can see, I was scrolling back the chart through the entire session of today. The only evidence we had, it was that one I was showing you earlier. So as you can see, they're not that frequent, but this is a good thing actually. Yeah, like, yeah, this one. We have another one here that's from Friday. As you can see, we have something very similar. Uh, in this situation, we have 502 uh lots hitting the bits uh, sorry the ask side still uh respecting the aggregation criteria but in this case as you can see the market has had an immediate follow-through and wasn't e exhausted at all 
at this price area. So in this case, of course, we couldn't have used this uh, situation to, tra to trade it short to the short side. On the opposite, if we just give it some time and we analyze uh, what happens bar by bar, what do we have afterwards? We have, yeah, market follows through immediately, comes back here, doesn't give that much of an evidence when it comes back to the area, at least in this bar. But then what happens in the next bar? We have absorption. We have absorption. That means that as we were uh, talking about last time, uh, heavy uh, sellers, the amount of sellers try to trying to sell and take the market down to the downside, which gets absorbed though, gets stopped out by gets stopped by uh, buyers, which actually we assume are the same buyers want wanting to defend defend those price level where they have placed their big trade and markets continues to the upside. This is a, basically the opposite situation than the one we were looking at earlier. Of course, this could have been a very nice trade to the, ups, that to the upside using the information of the aggregate volume because we can see that price wasn't exhausted at all over the price levels where he had test traded and on the opposite side what happens uh, sellers try to sell but they can make it so once price starts again to move to the upside with some pressure to the upside as well of course in this stage we have one two and three confirmation leading to the same direction leading to the same confirming the same idea for a possible long trade all right <laughs> somebody is saying thanks for this content i'm very, I'm very glad to hear that uh, i really hope you all like this uh, series of uh, content we have talked about over these 10 weeks. Uh, tonight, <laughs> tonight, I'm sure, is going to be the last webinar. I'm not getting that wrong. I hope so. No, sorry. <laughs> I'm just joking, of course. Yeah, that was the last um, that was the last topic we have included in the full program of this series of webinars. Uh, of course, in terms of order flow analysis, uh, volume analysis, there is much more we could have to talk about, but there is, uh, it is a never ending topic if you want to be accurate. But of course, uh, over these last 10 weeks, we were able to have a quick uh, overview of many different aspects of what the what the proper uh volume analysis and all the flow analysis can be uh i am really uh, glad to uh for having the chance to present this series of webinar to all of you i hope you uh could appreciate this uh i hope you have all liked the content and of course uh if you want to make some questions about uh, we have talked about, I um, feel free to email me and uh, I'll give you a reply. Uh, that's it. So uh, <laughs> thanks for your attention and I wish you a good evening and a good trading.